you tell us a bit about the sheep you have on the farm? So we've got 1,700 yows. We've got a mixture of Texel cross yows and mule yows. The mules are the ones you can see with a bit more speckly dark faces and the Texels are quite white faced ones. We like to have a bit of a mixture in our yows because some yows are bred to be more woolly or less woolly depending on the climate. So we get a good mixture out of these two yows and some are a bit more agile and smaller yows for kind of hill ground, higher up ground, we're running about more. Um, so this gives us the best combination for our sort of ground out of these two yows. And can I just ask, so that you say the word yows, can you just explain what that oh, means? A yow is a female sheep, the, the female sheep that we keep for breeding from. So we, yeah, we'll lamb those yows and that gives us our Scotch lamb. And you've also got tups, that's the males, or do you call yeah. them rams? Uh, we call them tups, but yeah, either works. Um, so we've got Texel and Suffolk rams. Um, the Texel ones are white-faced ones, our Suffolk ones are black-faced ones. Um, and again, they, they are the best to for giving us the kind of lamb we want to produce our Scotch lamb. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a bit about a year in the life of the sheep at Goland Farm? So if we start at lambing time, lambing time, we start lambing indoors in March because the weather's not as predictable in March. We start indoors and as the weather gets better, we start moving outdoors. So our latest sheep will lamb in May and hopefully in the sunshine outdoors. And then through the summer, they'll be out to the fields eating the, eating the green grass and as it gets warmer, we take the wool off them, so we'll clip them in July time. And from then, they just spend the summer in the fields until we wean them, which is taking the lambs away from their mums, which happens kind of now in autumn. And that's because when they get to a certain age, the lambs don't need the milk anymore, but they're still with their mums and they still try to get the milk and it can cause damage to the mums, others. So the best thing for both is if we separate them and they get used to not having any milk and then they can really thrive. And then through the winter, we keep some lambs to fatten ourselves. So we've got kale, um, which is a good high protein source of food for them. Um, we've got a couple of fields of that and we'll put the lambs on there through the winter. And we keep the yows. Um, we control what the yows are fed because just before the winter, we put them to the tup and they're growing lambs inside them. So we can't feed them too much or the lambs get too big. Um, so we've got to control what they eat. And then that brings us back to January, where we'll, we'll scan them to see how many lambs each yow is having, just so that we know exactly how much feeding they need each. And then back in March, we'll, we'll start lambing again. So it does a full cycle. Mm -hmm. Great, and can you tell us a bit more about the scanning? The scanning is when we ultrasound scan the yows. So each yow will run through a crate. Mm -hmm. We'll have an ultrasound scanner put on its belly, and that shows us how many lambs are inside the yows. So that if they're having one lamb, we don't feed them any extra protein because there's a risk that they'll grow too big and they won't be able to lamb themselves. But if they're having three or four, they need a lot of extra feeding um, so that they've come out a good sized lamb and the yow doesn't lose too much condition herself.